Alrighty, everyone, we're going to do uh, lesson three in the first unit, Intro to Coasters. And for that, we're going to go ahead and uh, reduce some shapes. We're going to learn how to use different multiple sprites. You're going to use variable names. Um, you're going to use uh, comments to help us to understand different parameters inside of our variables. And uh, uh, we're going to use the parameters to change the position, size, and color of, of, our, of, our, uh, of a shape. Now our end product is going to be to make a, uh, a logo of a, uh, a, of a brand name. So let's look at uh, some examples here. Here they have the Target logo. I don't know, for me I think I, the, the Target logo should be a little bit lower. Let's set the size down a little bit smaller. Let's run it again. See, that looks a little bit better. Where this, the Target isn't touching the actual Target, the word Target. Anyways, a little nitpick. Here we have the NBC logo. And we have a bunch of different cone shapes, which are really some di triangles at different positions with a circle at each end of the same color. In the middle, we've got this uh, the, the, the body of the peacock and the nose, or the beak, I should say. We have the letters NBC, and then we have a couple stars. All right, let's keep going. The last one, I think, is Coco Chanel. So we have some circles, and there's some more circles on, <laughs> underneath that, right? And there's an ellipse in the middle. And we've got some other shapes over here that kind of cover up parts of the circle to make it, let me get, give it like that C shape. Those are the squares over here. Alrighty, so again, that's our end goal. But for right now, we're going to concentrate on learning how to make a house with, with some basic shapes. We're going to do a circle, a triangle, a square, and a rectangle. So take a look at the code that we have here. We have a circle over here. We have a big pink triangle. We have a green square. We have kind of like this uh, aqua or uh, cyan colored uh, rectangle. In the back over here, we have a rectangle too, but we're not going to do the chimney in our uh, in our product. It's a little bit smaller. So you can see the whole thing. Alrighty. Check plus. And that works. So all we have to do for that one is click the green arrow. Easy. Now, I suggest what you do when you when they give you all that code, you kind of look through it and see if you can understand it. But if there's something in there that you're not quite getting, it's okay to not understand it perfect because we're just beginning. So shapes are objects that we add to the page, just like sprites. So click on shapes, find circle. I highlight it for you and everything. Then click run. Now we have a blue circle over here. We got our check plus. We're good to go. Let's take a look at what we have. Sprite equals coasters dot circle. 0, 0, 100, blue. Well, what's all that stuff mean? Hmm. What does all that stuff mean, I should say? Well, we don't know yet, but we'll figure it out. Check plus. Submit our work. Move on to the next thing. So these things, again, are called parameters inside of a parentheses. And we can change these parameters. Like These are like the, the bits of information that our code relies on to run the way that we want it to. And the code tells us what the parameters are. So th this comment over here. See over here, we've got this gray text. It starts off with, in Python, comments start off with a hashtag, and it just, it just tells the computer, ignore the stuff on this line, it's just a comment, you don't need to worry about it, it's just for humans, <laughs> right? So this is a comment for us, it says, uh, sprite equals coasters.circle x, y, diameter, color. So it tells us what all the different parameters are, the stuff inside the parentheses here. We've got the x position, which we learned in the last unit, and the y position or last lesson, where we did coasters in space. So the x and the y, where our circle is on the coordinate plane. The diameter, how, you know, uh, the, the length in pixels from one side of the circle to the other, and the, if, if the line goes through the middle, right? And uh, what the color of the circle is, blue. We're going to change the x coordinate uh, to negative 150. So the x is the first one. It's going to change that to negative 150. Not 1,500, negative 150. You see now our circle's over here to the left, not in the middle. Great, check plus. 
let's look at the circle and the gray comment again. All right. Also, so the second number is the Y coordinate. So change that one to 175. That one's going to go up, right? Because it's positive. Positive in the Y coordinate is up. Great. Now our blue circle is up top over here, top left corner. Now we're going to change the diameter. That's the third number. So X, Y, 100. So change this 100 to 75. Now let's should make our circle a little bit smaller. Excuse me. All right. Uh, here we go. Change the color to gold. Make sure you don't delete the quotes. So change it from blue to gold. Keep, make sure, like, if you don't have the quotation marks around, and like, say, if I, you can see in, in uh, codesters, uh, strings, which are just, you know, text or numbers or whatever inside of quotation marks, if they don't have the quotes around it, I mean, in, pi, in the codesters, those things are green if it has the quotation marks around it. So if you get rid of one of the quotation, one of the quotation marks, then it changes it to, to that orange color, which makes it think that it's some kind of variable. But we're not dealing with a variable. We're dealing with a string. Strings and variables are two different things. Two different things. Now, the value of a string could, or the value of a variable could be a string, or it could be, you know, a bunch of different things. Right here, sprite is uh, is the the coasters block with uh, the coasters that circle with these parameters. This is what the value of the sprite is right now. All right. In this activity, we learn how to use variables to refer to sprites. So over here, we've got this pig. Sprite equals coaster that sprite pig. Just click it. So we hit, the first thing we have is our variable name. And in coasters, it's in the orange. So this is the variable name. We use this name to assign actions to sprites. And this, the example they have over here, they have, uh, well, the first line is sprite equals coasters that sprite pig. So, right, so they made this pig sprite. And the second line, they have sprite turn right 360. And you saw in the example that the sprite turned right 360 degrees, so it went all the way around, did a you know, 360. Then we have our coasters tool. This just tells us, like, go to the coasters library, find something called sprite. Then over here, find something that has the inside the coasters library, a coaster sprite library, find something that has an image label of pig. And it finds the picture of the pig, and it displays it as a sprite. We can use variables to name our sprites. Then we can use the variable name to assign actions to our sprite. So instead of calling everything sprite, we want to give our variables different names. That way, you can if everything is called sprite, then it's not going to work. Uh, if you want to deal with more than one sprite, then it think it's much too complicated to you can go back and forth. You have to write a lot of code. Where if you if you name everything different things, then you, you know just right away you know what it is that you're dealing with because everything has a different name. Where if like I, if I called everyone in the class student and said, hey student, come over here, you know, either one person, whoever like the last person is that I talked to, well in, in code, whoever the last person is that I talked called the student would, would would come up. Whereas in like a class, like a real life environment, like maybe everyone would come up. Uh, it, it makes it much more confusing, right? So if, instead of calling it Sprite, if I call it Wilbur, then when I talk to say, hey, Wilbur, come up, then only Wilbur knows right, that, uh, <laughs> that he needs to come up. Check plus, submit our work. So let's look at the code in the editor. What's the sprite's variable name? Now, the sprite's variable name inside of Coaster is going to be orange, but it's the, basically it's the first thing right, on the other side, the left side of the, of the equal sign. So, Addy is a variable, equals whatever. In this case, it's person one, the coaster sprite person one. What is the image of the sprite's image name? So the sprite's image name is going to be the string inside, it's going to be the parameter, the, the string inside the, the uh, parentheses, right, which is person one. What is the best definition of a variable? A uh, variable is just something that takes the place of something else, so something that stores a value. Again, it could be uh, a block of code, it could be a number, it could be a string, it could be a, a, a bunch of different uh, a set of data, it could be a lot of different things. So a name that stores the value is the best answer for that one.
All right, let's try, let's try changing the variable name of our sprite. So every sprite has a variable, every sprite in every shape has a variable name. Shapes and sprites are really just the same thing. Right? The name of the shape is the, is the orange word before the equal sign. All right, so here we go. We're going to change it to from sprite to sun. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go on. Great job. All right, this program has a bug, which means we need to fix it. So let's run it. All right. So we, what we wanted to happen here was we wanted the bird, the toucan, to go to the left, and we want the panther to go over right, to the right. Let's run it one more time. So what happened is the panther went to the left, and then it went to the right. So the panther went to the right spot eventually, but before that, it did something else it wasn't it was supposed to do, and the toucan didn't do anything at all. So let's take a look at our code. Sprite equals coaster set sprite toucan. Then we have sprite equals coaster set sprite panther. Sprite glides to this position over here, and then it glides to this position over here. So if we, the way that the computer uh, runs a program, right, it goes from the top down to the bottom. So the first line of code down to the last line of code in order. So the first line of code says, all right, make a sprite, make a, have a variable, and give it the uh, image label of of a toucan, so the toucan appears. Then make a sprite, the same, now we're going to change sprite, now it's not a toucan anymore, now it's a panther. And then well, I want that sprite to glide to over to the left, and then I want that, that panther to glide over to the right. Now we've got, if we give them different names, we can have different variables do different things. So if I say, if they want the toucan to be named Sam, so we'll call this one Sam, and the, uh, the panther to be called Smokey. Now I say I want Sam to glide over to the left, and I want Smokey to glide over to the right, rather than calling everything Sprite. Again, you saw it happen in order. So first, the uh, Sam and Smokey appear. First Sam and Smokey, although it happens so quickly that you can't you know, see that first Sam and then Smokey. Then Sam glides. You saw that Sam glided first, the toucan, and then the panther glided. They didn't, have, didn't happen at the same time. All righty. Now I'm going to draw the square. Let's go to shapes. Let's get the square over here. Let's run it. Now it's a blue square. Let's look at our parameters. We have the x and the y, 0, 0, the very middle. When we place our shapes, it goes by the middle of the shape. So 0, 0, those are going to be the very middle of the square. It's not going to be like the top left corner or anything like that. Uh, I think like in uh, HTML or a CSS, uh, or those two things combined, like when you place objects, it, I think it goes by the top left corner, if I remember correctly. But anyways, we're not worried about that right now. We're worried about Python. So X and Y, where, it's, where, it's, uh, where the, the shape is placed on the, on the uh, stage. Then the width of the, of the square, and then the color of the square. So the width over here is 100, the color is blue. So different shapes will have different parameters based off of the shape. So since, the, since we're talking about a square, where a square is a four-sided shape with each of the internal angles as 90 degrees, and the, and the width and the height are going to be the same, we don't need a width and a height because the width and the height are the same thing. So there's no, if, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about a square. That's great. Let's check plus. It's going to work. Go on to the next thing. All right, now we're going to change the variable name from sprite to house. Is that all we do? All right. Yep. Looks exactly the same, but now instead of being called sprite, it's called house. So say we're working on some kind of project that has a bunch of different squares in it. Right, we wouldn't want to have each one called sprite, because then if we want to manipulate them, right, we would have to, uh, it would, we'd only be manipulating whichever one was the last uh, square, which is the last square called sprite. So if we call like you know, square one, square two, square three, square four, it's much easier for us to figure out which one we're talking about. Change the y coordinate to negative 125. So leave the x alone. Change the y to negative 125. Square goes down. Great. 
change the width of our square to 250. So x, y width from 100 to 250. Much bigger square there. there you go. Change it to purple, from blue to purple. Make sure you leave the quotation marks alone. And a purple square. I don't know who'd want to live in a purple house, but, you know, to eat their own. <laughs> All right. Maybe the Joker wants to live in a purple house. This program has a bug, which means we need to fix it. We're trying to draw a rectangle, but it has the wrong height. You should use comments to determine which parameters match with which value. Click Run to see what's wrong. All right, so we have this rectangle over here. We want the height to fill up this whole area. So let's take a look at the parameter. We have the uh, x, the y, the width, and the height, and the color. So we're changing that. We have to change the height. But what do you want to change the height to? Well, it just tells you in the directions it's 200. But we could also measure from 0 up to 200 is 200. So x, y, width, height, change it from 50 to 200. There we go. Let's add in a triangle. So go to shapes, triangle, change it to roof. There we go. Now it's not properly placed or sized, but we have a triangle and it's called roof. Change the triangle size to 100, so XY size to 300, sorry, from 100 to 300. There we go. Let's run it. Nice big triangle. You can see they give you a preview of what your end result should look like. Check plus. All right, so this is, again, what the preview is supposed to be like. We're supposed to make change the triangle to green and be in the right spot. And over here is what we have so far. Right now we don't have anything. I right, uh, changed the y coordinate to 100, so we're moving, leaving the x the same, leaving the y to be 100, and change the color to green, from blue to green. There we go. Great job. This program has a bug, which means we need to fix it. Let's see what the bug is. Unclose parentheses or brackets starting on line one. Okay, well, there's only one line of our code. So we have to make sure you have, close your parentheses for your parameters. So this tells our program that we're done inputting parameters for this circle. If you don't have the closing uh, 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 parentheses for your parameters, it just thinks that the parameters are going on and on and on, and everything is going to be uh, messed up. Alrighty, let's put in a door. So let's go to shapes. Let's find a rectangle. Let's call it door. Instead of sprite, door. Excellent. Alrighty, next activity. We gotta move it down to the right. This is what our end goal should look like. All right, so change the y coordinate. The first x stays the same, negative 1, 75. Oops, not 1750. There we go. Uh, change the width to 75. From 100 to 75. And change the height to 150. And it stays blue. Great. See now our rectangle is like that, good. Instead of being up here, it's down here. All right, here are some questions. Let's see if we can get these questions right. Based off this code over here. What is the location of the circle? It goes, the first two numbers are the x and the y. So 0, 150, oh, that's a. What is the diameter of the circle? The next number is the diameter, x, y diameter. Diameter is going to be 100. What is the variable name for the circle? Remember, the variable name is the stuff in orange on the left side of the equal sign. So that's going to be sprite.
Now customize your house. Be sure to meet these minimum technical requirements. Add a background. So let's do that. I'm going to put the background at the beginning here. Go to stage. I'm going to put in, um, I don't know, a park. Sounds nice. Uh, change the color of at least one part of your house. I'll change the color of the door to be brown. Add a person or animal sprite. Change the variable name we use to refer to your sprite. All right, I'm gonna find, I'll oh, go to sprites first. Duh. All right, there we go. That's, that kind of gives you like a preview, right? usually, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll split in person five. And we'll call this person, I don't know, uh, we'll call this Mr. Dave, All right? And there we go, let's run it. Well, <laughs> it's kind of androgynous person, it could be me, I don't know. Let's try person, person six. Let's try, I don't know, I don't know. close enough. All right, <coughs> there we go. But one th I'm gonna put my person down over here to the bottom left corner. So let's take a, let's do, um, there's different ways to do that. I'm going to use an action, go to, and the sprite's going to go to oh, uh, this part down over here. So we'll call this one, uh, let me see, let's look, it's about negative 150, negative 150. We'll call it negative 150, negative 150, not negative 250. Let's run it and see what happens. Wait, there is no one, there's nothing called sprite. I have to change my name, so Mr. Dave goes to the right position. So now Mr. Dave goes over here. So remember, all of your, your labels, your, your variables have to match. So I got my check plus, let's submit our work. Now our end goal is to make a, make a logo, all right? So uh, the logo I did is Mickey Mouse, Disney, all right? So let's take a look at what I did. So first I have a circle, and I changed the variable name. So I have three circles, right? I changed the variable name from circle, from sprite to face, because it's you know, the big circle in the middle. And then I have the, to go at a certain position, a certain size, and to be colored black. Then I uh, change the size of it to a smaller size, and I make it get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I make it get 20% uh, 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 bigger. So 1.2 would be 20% bigger, right? until it gets up to the normal size. And in between, I make it weight a little bit, because if I don't put the weight between, then it'll just go from tiny to, super, to, to the normal size without any, there's no like, animation to it. Now obviously the more, uh, the small, I mean the smaller amount of time and the more like size changes you have, you know, the smoother it will look. You see if it's kind of like, you know, jumpy when I did it, but so if I made it like 10% bigger, each time, and I did this uh, uh, more times, so it would look a little bit smoother. If I did it you know, 100 times, then it would look even smoother, but I'm not too worried. I don't wanna you know, make myself have too much work. Then I do the same thing for each of the circles on the left and the right. So I have left ear and right ear. Normally the only difference between the, the, one, the face one and the other two is gonna be the position, like where the circle starts, and the size. So the X and the Y position, I made them go up to, this one starts at negative 100, 100, and this one, and, and um, the size is 120. This one starts at positive 100, 100, so on the right-hand side, and it's black. They're all black. So step three, use parameters and action commands to put shapes into position. I did that over here, really, with these things over here. And then step four, use text commands from the Shapes Toolkit to create a uh, wording for it. If you go to, um, uh, sorry, uh, Shapes and Text, there's some different things you can do over here. There's text, text at a position, so if you want the text to start at a certain spot, I wanted my text to start down over here. That's 0, negative 150, so it's in the middle and down a little bit. Then I changed the text size to 40, and then I made... Um, my, uh, uh, I changed, I gave it a, a text background. So if you see, over here. Now technically it does all these things 
in order, but since I don't put like a stage weight between each of these things, uh, it just appears all at once. Whereas if I, you know, if I, in between, at first I'm saying Disney, which is my variable name. You don't, don't want to call it just text or whatever the default one is. Well, let's see what happens when it's put in. Just call it Sprite, right? I don't want it to be called Sprite. <clears throat> Disney is uh, coasters.txt Disney. So instead of like over here, right? Where instead of uh, this, I changed it to Disney. This is Disney, right? And you, but you can put whatever you want inside of the quotation marks, and it, that's that's what we'll print out in the text. All right, there we go. So again, your job is to make pick out any kind of logo that you want. Now, when you pick out your logo, this is probably the most difficult part. You want to pick out a logo that is going to be relatively simple for you to recreate. But maybe like the, the 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 thing you can do is you can add in some animations and stuff like that. So if all I did was just have the circles and the text, that would technically fulfill all the requirements, but you want to have something that's going to make it, you know, give it, spice it up a little bit, so where you can show uh, your skill as a programmer, where you can have uh, some animations. Of, uh, you can do the part where maybe the shapes move to certain, say, start off maybe in the middle, and they move to different spots. That would be something, right? Or you could do it like I have, where they kind of like change size and stuff. Or you know, combination of both things, both of those things. You saw like in the examples. This one, like I said, it would be, uh, you know, an example of you know, like a, like a, a meets expectations kind of thing, right? Very simple, very basic, but it does just fulfill all the requirements. Whereas example number two over here, right? It's much more involved because we, here we're talking about different triangle three points, which is one of the shapes that's available for a three point triangle. And then you can, and as far as you could, if you, when you look at it, you can see it's much more involved with positioning all the triangles and all that kind of stuff. So that's much more complicated. So this is going to be more of like the exceeds expectations as far as doing a, when you get to the, to the rubric at the end. And the last example over here is like kind of like that somewhere in the middle ground, you know, where we've got some shapes and some animations and that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's not the very basic, but it's also you know not super complicated either. So, you know, do whatever you think you're most comfortable with. So, but uh, you know. If the, the worst case scenario, you try something, it doesn't work, you can always just delete it <laughs> and, and, uh, and start over. So, uh, or you know, just delete that last thing that you did. What I suggest you do is when you're working on these programs, right, run, w change one thing at a time, run it, and see if it works the way you want it to work. If it doesn't, then, then, um, then, then all you have to do is just delete one line. Whereas if you add in 50 steps and then you run it and, then you, and it doesn't work the way, it can be much more difficult to figure out where you're making a mistake. So do one thing at a time, you know, or a couple things at a time, and figure out. And then if it doesn't work, like I said, it's easy to figure out what needs to what needs to be fixed. Whereas if you again add 50 steps, it's much more difficult. All right. So I hope this helps you out. I will see you guys in class today. Have fun. <laughs>